Hey guys, I want to talk about compassion. And more importantly, I want to talk about why I see that so many on this planet seemingly find it so difficult to be compassionate, to put others before themselves. Now, not all people who are trying to be compassionate necessarily succeed. I do my best to create within me a compassionate outlook and connection with those around me. But it doesn't mean that I'm by any means perfect and constantly compassionate. Sometimes you can get too caught up in the busyness of something and you might forget to put others at a high level of importance before yourself just because you're so busy. And this is natural, but the answer to why people are not compassionate exists in what I've just said. If I'm going about my day and I'm getting too busy and it's too hectic, I might overlook the needs of another person around me because I am so heavily indoctrinated into my own thoughts and uh, my own goings on and what's happening around me. Ultimately, I am being placed into my carnal mind or into my ego. And when you go into there, you lose your connection from self or from I or from, not necessarily from I as such. Let me define I, I think would be best. If I were to def define I as the connection to self and the ever-present field of consciousness and I was to assign the word me to the carnal mind. I'm too busy inside the me. I'm too busy and so I disconnect from I. Now this is the solution. Because having persons come away from the me, from their mind, from their ego, having them come into the space of I and that connection to consciousness is the point or is where you get to the point where you can see the multiple eyes around you. For just as I myself here feel that I am, it's no different to the feeling that you might have when you connect with source that you are. And as we both sit at other sides of the world saying, I am, and we feel it, and you sit at your side of the world feeling, I am. That I am is the same I am. That connection is a connection to the same field. And in that connection to the I am, to the I, is where we can find empathy by understanding that each person around us, each sentient being around us and each non-sentient being around us is also dwelling in that vast I amness that we experience when we manage to silence our carnal minds, silence the me and connect and commune. Now the problem you have is that the experience of I am, or the experience of I, must be done in solidarity. It must be done as a singular. That is the reflection of how the experience must be. It must be a singular experience. We must feel I am. We must feel that connection where we say I am. But in understanding that other people are experiencing that as well is where we can start to have a very compassionate attitude. Because we no longer become a separate me which is distant from that person sitting at the other end of the room, the person riding on the same public transport, the person at the other side of the planet. We realise 
that when we go into meditation and we find that wonderful, deep connection with the collective consciousness, that point where we realize that we are connected to it all, that same feeling of connection exists in other people who are going into that same state of consciousness. And that feeling of connection is quite possibly the source of all, maybe just most, compassion. For it's an understanding that point of connection to that ever-present field of self that we can look at another and have absolute empathy for them. For we know the pain we experience is the same pains that they experience. We know that oneness and unity with the present moment and God that we experience is no different to theirs. And if we can eliminate the me completely, and John is not experiencing the feeling of I am, then without the experiencer, you simply become that union, you become that I am. And thus, if the person on the other side of the planet, whatever their name may be, eliminates themselves as the experiencer of that, then they just become that. They become like a tree growing. They become like water flowing. They become like clouds blowing. They attune to that constant, ever-moving, ever-expressing oneness of consciousness. And... When the me is gone and John is not experiencing it and I can simply sit in that powerful experience of oneness. And you can say, I am who I am. I am connected to it all. Then a person at the other side of the world can do exactly the same thing. And at that very moment in time, it's arguable that you're the same thing. Now, of course, this doesn't carry on forever because you must return to your separate experience. You must return to John. You must return to whomever you are. But at least you come back with a saturation, with a, a leftover hue of the I amness. And then when you see that person on the street, and you want to raise the compassion within you, you just need to look at them and go through it through their point of eye. And if you can go back into consciousness and eliminate the me and tune into there, you can easily, easily empathize with another. How, what must it be like for someone to be sleeping rough on the street? What must it be like for someone to have no food? What must it be like for someone to have to toil and labor so heavily as a as a child, as I experience here. And when you get to that point, is this not the home of all compassion? And thus the reason people find it so difficult to be compassionate is because they are not I, they are me. And if I, for instance, cannot do what I want because of myself, then an imposter must be removed, so as I can. So if we look to all these great teachers who taught compassion, Jesus, Buddha, the teachings of the Vedas, the words of Krishna, What these men, sons of God, avatars, messiahs, what they had done, be it through birthright or be it through some sort of work they participated in to get there, or be it expressed through the allegorical workings of something like the story of Krishna, 
all of these persons in this huge script of the compassion of life, the huge explanation and continuance of those great hearts and great voices who tried to explain the root of compassion to humanity. What they had done is they had taken me out of the equation and they had connected with the I am. But not only had they connected as the I am, they had connected with it in a way where they were no longer someone experiencing that connection. They simply were that connection. And so when they came back to their normal life, because they understood that others were experiencing the same thing, did they not then find the root of compassion? Because their hearts were open and their empathy was endless. Because every being they saw, they could attune to and understand from connecting with that field of life that we all express and experience that their suffering is something that we can feel too as we are not separate from it truly we are not it is only the illusion of the me that allows itself to feel separated from that suffering and so this is why it is desperately important to do as Jesus Christ asked you to do and take no thought for your life. For in taking no thought, you can connect with the ever-present flow of this moment. And when you do, you can create links to other people which allow you to have the empathy you need to be as compassionate as possible. If you fill a room with babies before they have learned to talk, walk, distinguish between self and other, as they are in that room looking at one another, imagine you sit them up in pillows, they don't know the difference between the other child and themselves. They are just a continuance and experience of what is happening in that present moment of consciousness. They dwell without any ego without any me to be able to experience it for they have not yet formed a me within them they dwell completely immersed in the i am feeling and they don't know the difference between their own body and the other child it's just one continuing experience and if we again can be following the teachings of a man like jesus christ and understand what he said that unless we become as children, we may not enter the kingdom. And the kingdom is surely the state of I. And the doorway to the kingdom beyond is surely from that state of I. Because then if we become as children, and as I melt away the me, and I experience the I am feeling, and I realize that another person who is experiencing that feeling is experiencing the same feeling, and if we can both do it without having a me, without John experiencing it, just by simply being a continuance of that feeling. Then in doing that in my own life, I find it very easy to have empathy for others. And I find it very easy to, to because of that empathy, act as best I can. And I say as humbly as I can, with as much compassion as I would hope would please God and this is why the world finds it often so difficult to be so compassionate because the world has too many me's and not enough eyes and as soon as many of those me's realize a sentence which comes into their life as often happens during a point of awakening, a sentence that happened within my life. And you say, how can I possibly go on living with myself? And something jerks you and you say, 
how can I possibly go on living with myself? Which one is truly I? Which one is truly who I am? And if you can't live with myself, take it away. When you take it away and you're left with that experience, in my experience, in these years of serving God, it allows for an effortless connection, an effortless ability to have empathy for others. And again, I say as humbly as I can, I hope allows me to act in a compassionate way that would please God. And therein lie the problem. The eyes of this planet are yet to be rid of or to dismiss the me's, the myselves of this planet. And once we do collectively know how to do that and do that, compassion will reign supreme. And I live in hope of that day. God bless, guys. Bye. Weapons always close to end, for he has seen too much hatred. The only weapon that he chooses is love, universal.